Hey kids, it's Justin James, and I'm Justin Explains looking at, I have trouble saying the name, Tupandactylus, a pterosaur from Brazil. So first and foremost, I'm going to talk about pterosaurs again, the flying reptiles. I must remind you that they are not dinosaurs. My example is very simple. I ask my, I always ask kids, do you have any cousins? And they sometimes they get it, sometimes they just stare at me and I said, do your parents have brothers or sisters who have kids? And they go, yes. So your cousins are the same time as you, you share an ancestor, your grandparent, you have a common grandparent but you're not the same person. Pterosaurs are like that to dinosaurs. They live at the same time, they share similar characteristics, some, some characteristics, but more importantly, they have a common ancestor in the fossil record. So, the big deal with this guy is that with pterosaurs in general, there's different groups. We often think of them as just, they're flying reptiles, but there's subgroups within that. And my analogy to you, of course, are birds, modern birds, which are not, you know, which are dinosaurs, not pterosaurs. A ostrich, a turkey, an owl. Again, two ground birds that can, one can fly, predatory bird. We have pelicans. We have, of course, penguins with their whole situation. We have scavenging condors and, of course, egrets. So, again, when you see, I mean, there are some 10,000 features of birds today. A lot of diversity in their lifestyles, their behaviors and all that. So with pterosaurs, I want you to kind of, they're not the same kind of animal, but apply that same logic to them. So this guy here is from Brazil, and so it was discovered, oh, actually, let's go ahead and open it. Uh, I would say normally they're the older and newer models, but I only have one species. So with the official scissors of Jurassic James, we're going to, let's, I like when the, the bands overcross, so you can just do one cut, and it's done. We receive our scissors. If you're wondering, there is um, there been an influx of Jurassic World figures, so I'm going over those guys. There you go. <clears throat> and I'm going to leave, the leave this here so I can see the names. I keep getting this two pindoctylus. So again, for the figure itself, I'm going to point out one thing looking at it. It's pretty good. It's, let's see, the legs are kind of short for the real animal. Pretty real skeleton. Uh, the species has been known since 2000, no, 1997 genus. And there are two species. And there's your DNA code there. And there's no kind of gimmick or anything. This is, you know, you can get either Kroger's or, which is interesting enough, or grocery store certain grocery stores. And so, in the world of pterosaurs, let me go ahead and move these eyes. I, because I'm only doing Jurassic World figures, and I know some of you are adult collectors who are into Jurassic World figures, give you a sec, I already did a video on this guy, so I'll just show you this one. Here's the most scientifically accurate uh, model of this. And here is a, um, like a three-packet Marshalls kind of thing. So you're saying that there's, generally speaking, uh, a consistent look to them. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I have <coughs> Jurassic World figures and then the other ones to compare it to. Also pointing out our guy is from Brazil. When you want to think about pterosaurs, they're found all over the world, but Brazil in the early Cretaceous period is like the best place for pterosaurs. They're really known for it. And in fact, the story between about this guy is, this, this, uh, this specimen is that uh, unfortunately there is a fossil black market. There's a fossil illegal market. And so countries like I think Mongolia, Russia, Canada have things, deals where like if you find a fossil on their, in the country, it belongs to the country's patriot. Uh, some states, like in the United States, have laws where if you're if it's here on your property and you own the property, it's your fossil. If it's state property, the state gets a fossil. If it's public land, if it's an invertebrate like a clam, no one cares. If it's a vertebrate like a bison, they would care. So it depends on where you are. But Brazil has more tighter rules now because there's been a lot of illegal fossils coming in and out. And particularly, I remember in the Irritator video, the Spinosaurus Irritator, that fossil was found uh, souped up fake parts and set to be sold to like a private collector illegally. And the government found it, caught it, and then the paleontologists who actually did real work on it had trouble taking off all the goo and gunk and named it Irritator because it was irritating. So that's an unfortunate thing, but with this one here particularly, it's hitting kind of new, uh, a new glide, no pun intended, because the idea is that uh, there's been re more research in it. So first of all, from some point of the skull, is that there is this, the, the red part, I guess the red and purple part here, that will be all flesh. The, the bone goes along here, this part here, and there's one that goes up here. Usually it's typically straight up, but the main thing to point out is that this is this really large crest. Now, other pterosaurs. So for example, you may have seen the Jurassic World and Morphodot. This is a... 2013 Safari to Morphodon. So again, you're seeing a general, this is an early pterosaur design. So these guys are pretty good, pretty neat. 
And again, this is one group of pterosaur. Just like I mentioned in thoropods, we have the spinosaurs and the allosaurs and the tyrannosaurs and the dromies or raptors. Same thing here. Uh, for Ramphorhynchus, there are no um, Jurassic World figures of it. So this is just the Safari 2010 example of a very good model of the animal. Uh, pterosaurs, I mean, I just did a Quest of Koalas video. The Asdarkids are the group that includes Quest of Koalas. So here's that, that big boy there. And here's a scientific model, a so far, 2017 model like this. I will point out that you hold the wing that way, right? And it's and it's closed. But this right here, like this part here, is the upper arm bone, the humerus. And this part here, the ulnar radius, is this part. So it's actually, so it should be like that. That is supposed to be straight. But you bend it, and that's weird. Anyway, the point is, uh, the another as dark it. This guy here now. This one is one from Europe. I think they had it in Prehistoric Planet. Unfortunately, or fortunately, when I ordered this one, I was going to open it, and I realized the packaging says it's a T-Rex. And I don't know if it's his mistake. Yeah, right. But I was like, that's cool. I'm going to leave it in this package. Maybe order another one one day. One day. But anyway, so here we have two Pterosaur Asdarkids, and then the Pteranodons, which are more famous until the Asdarkids are that famous. These guys are pretty big as well. And here's a Safari, a walking one from Safari... 19. And so these guys, again, you see the Jurassic World version, you see this one, again the name Tranodon means wing without teeth, and like all the Jurassic World ones have teeth, and the Papa ones have teeth. So this one in Safari has the decency to at least close its beak, so I wouldn't get angry. Anyway, the point is, they're different groups of pterosaurs, so when you find one like this, you go, well, where does it fit in? Well, again, in Brazil, there's a very cool family called the Tepihards, so there's Tranodonids, the Asdarkids, the uh, Ramphorhynchids, and, here's the and here are the Tepihara. Tepihara meaning, uh, also I've heard it pronounced Tepijara, but it would mean more Spanish or Latin origin. The H was not like an H, sorry, the J was not like an H, so we Tepihara, not Tepijara. Uh, anyway, the point is, these, I've done a video on these guys, but here is a Safari, I'm assuming, 20, yeah, 2005. And here's a Jurassic World, I think like a couple years ago model. Uh, so again, these guys are a well known group. And initially, when discovered, it was thought to be a part of this group because obviously. But, it's, but but looking at it again, different paleontologists said, "Well, no, it's, it's, it's a different species." Now, what's going on there with that is morphology again. So, if you compare a skeleton of a horse and a cow and a sheep, those are all very different animals. They have hooves. The horse and a like a donkey are closer to each other in design than a cow. And then within the horse and donkey, they're very similar, but they're still different. I guess so. Yes, yeah, so species. It's just different species. So looking at the, now, this design, now one, this one, the Tepihara should have just a bump there and a crest like that and skin on it. This one has, should have a straight crest, so she goes more up like that. Uh, other than that, it has the proper part, the hands or forelimbs should have the four fingers. And so the idea is that there's one, two, three, four, and then a long finger here. Same thing on this side, that's really good. The feet. There are three bigger toes, and then this one here. Usually, have tears without four toes, and so it, it, it matches up pretty much. But uh, the important thing to point out this thing is that there are many of these pterosaurs. Say, well, why they have different crests? And the example I give you are the ceratopsians, the horned dinosaurs. You know, a lot of them have three horns, like triceratops, but their frills are different shapes, different spikes, different parts. The hadrosaurs, or quote duckbill dinosaurs, have different shaped crests. And so, when you're looking for your, a mate in your own species, even though these guys to you and I look very similar. They look, I mean, they don't to me, but to every, most people, they look very similar. Uh, these guys are still different uh, species, so they would know that they're a different group. And they probably, probably, one would nest over here and one would nest over there or something like that, right? So it's a very important part of this, uh, this differentiation of species. And so as far as lifestyle goes with these guys, I mean, the, the environment is found in, um, there's fish and lizards and frogs, you know, like, you know. I don't go over that normally. I'm usually looking at the bigger animals that live with them, but that's also a very important part of the environment. It has been argued, and of course debated, that they may have had a lifestyle similar to as dark. It says, you see this guy here is walking like a giant, it's as tall as a giraffe for reference. Um, and it walks around on land and is eating, you know, small vertebrates and things. Maybe even crustaceans like crabs. Uh, this guy, I mean, the toys don't really show up, but the, the, the length of the neck on the skeleton and the length of the limbs suggest that maybe more of a walking animal but again it's being debated it's being attacked i just want you to know in this video what this animal was and where it fell in it is a pterosaur pterosaur meeting winged finger and i'll point out that when we first found it well when modern science first found pterosaurs 
uh, the idea was these animals, pterodactyl, and I use that example because I only have but one pterodactyl. There was a museum meeting of volunteers, and they had bought like the um, one of those party packs of prehistoric critters to put on the table decorations, and I saw this one in the pack, and I had never seen a pterodactyl toy or model like this, and I said, "Can I?" And I, I very childishly said, "Can I have that?" And they're like, "Sure, we don't care." But the idea is, it's the only pterodactyl list I have. So, so again, when pterodactyl was discovered, uh, it was you know described. The idea was pterodactyl. You know, look at the winged for birds they have two well two fingers per se and then two little like a little nub maybe sometimes and there's feathers so they fly with their feathers the, the, the keratin dead cells of a feather for a bat all the fingers are very long and the webbing that we have here will be longer to the end so bats can fly like this and for the pterosaurs again they they have a they miss an opinion excuse me they have a long ring finger and so that's what you're seeing here is a long ring finger and the skin attaching to the hip like that. And if you don't know, somewhere on Instagram or Facebook or all the platforms, there's a picture of, of uh, the American West with a pterosaur, like uh, some cowboys or something, or a rancher shot it. And they have this, like, and essentially it's a pteranodon. And I always just, I'm suspicious of those kind of things when the animals in the picture are very well known species. But they have a pteranodon like animal through crest here. And it has, it's like they have a stretch like they shot it somewhere in the desert and they're, and they're showing you know, this picture. And I remember when I first saw it, it had bat-like wings, not pterosaur-like wings. And I remember getting very upset by that because I know they're faking his image. And of course, whenever I do see that, that, that image come up again on social media, I'm always quick to respond and talk and, and, and say things and all that, right? So anyway, so with that being said, there, there, would, there would be in some pterosaurs little structures here in the wing that are not boned. That would help, help the wing kind of sense the environment around them and help them when they're flying to try to expend the least energy as possible. And so you're filling this different thermals and when you can kind of do this and do that and move around. But again, having actual fingers in the wing like a pterosaur, that was not true. I'm not sure why one of this little tangent, it just really upsets me. But that, because people would see it and go like, oh, that's a real thing or is it a real thing? It's like, no, they're lying to you. Anyway, but in general, this guy here, as far as his diet goes, I mean, pterosaurs in general, we know are, well, evidence suggests they're carnivorous not that they are flying down and picking up like small animals and flying away with them uh the, their feet and their, their feet are that strong they're not talons they're like bat feet and then two uh their bones are hollow so i mean these guys are very lightweight and in general pterosaurs to me uh, it's i like them and i hate them like they're weird looking animals like they i mean they are from perspective they are the first vertebrates animals with backbones to fly the first time, flight happened four times in Earth's history, the first time being uh, bugs. And bugs kept, well, insects particularly, kept their, their all six legs and they grew wings extra. What the vertebrates did, and also backbones like bats, birds, and pterosaurs, not in that order, actually it's pterosaurs, birds, and bats, uh, they sacrificed their up four limbs to become wings. And so, I mentioned earlier different styles of wing, but the idea with pterosaurs is, I, I mean, not that there's one wrong design or not, but... You can really tell they were the first ones to try to fly because their design is very, it's like they have these giant heads and these wide shoulders and these tiny, like, it's like as if they were being designed and you're making all this cool stuff and you're like, oh yeah, we have to put legs in the last minute, like the budget's running out, we're going to put this on there. And so they have these little tiny feet and, and movies are depicted like they're these giant talons picking up players, like they can't do that, you're not able to do that. So that's why I kind of, I like them in general, but it's just something that kind of annoys me that they do it that way in movies because they just don't have that structure to hold out. Their, their mouth, their skulls are their, are their main focal point. And again, I showed you all those birds in the beginning. Those birds pick up their beaks. They, you know, they react that way. And so pterosaurs are no different in that sense. But again, uh, they are the first animals to take to the first rivers to take to the flop sky. So give them some credit. I will also point out that Tepihara has a little bump right there. When you see a little bump like that, that's... In some of these toys, they are exaggerating. But in this situation, no, they do have something similar to that in their skull. So, anyway, the point, and you say, well, what, why have such a huge crest? The idea that maybe they, uh, when they're flying around, this could catch wind and kind of throw them off. Uh, the answer that's floating around is that these guys, I mean, of course, these different crest designs, uh, I mentioned it earlier, are used to defy each other, but also the bigger, stronger your crest is, the more attractive you, you are, meaning that if you're signaling a mate and you say, wow, I have this giant crest that's, that's intact, not damaged, and brightly colored. I'm very healthy. 
It's like for a human. If a human man, particularly, is wearing a, uh, like an expensive suit and he's driving an expensive car and he has expensive rings and watches, that implies, and not always true, but it implies that he has enough income to afford those kind of things. Now, of course, people will sometimes not have the income and pay loans and keep these things, but in general, that it's showing that. Well, for these animals, having these big crests and everything, being healthy is saying, I am strong, my genes are good enough that I can be this big and strong and have a big, intact, healthy crest, and I can still, I have energy to spare kind of thing. And so this guy, having a crest like that, is a clear way of ex ex showing that very quickly. Um, I mean, obviously, there are hypotheses that these, you know, pterosaurs may have made noises or did dances or have kind of a ritual. I mean, animals do, when it's coming coming to pair bonding, finding mates, they do have, you know, sometimes they take, some birds will take, I mean, birds are a great example for all this stuff. They'll take, um, you know, make nests and they'll do dances and all the, or both. And so, to, I won't say, well, birds do it, pterosaurs do it too, but I will say that many animals have, I mean, we, we can't call it culture because they're animals, so anthropologists say no, but in biological sense, it's simply some kind of personality, culture, activity that you can, you can, you can be able to monitor, actually. And so, those are the things, and I'll say this in closing, those are the things that people go, as a biologist, what do you want to know? Like, yeah, where'd they go and this and that, but... The, the behavioral aspects of dinosaur lives, that to me is really cool. And that's something that, in my mindset, we probably won't be able to uncover because we're just barely understanding their structures, their, their you know, their, where they're from and how they migrate, much less behavioral things that will never fossilize. So those are the things that, quote, keep me up at night because I'm like, well, we'll never know that, right? But anyway, so in general, good figure. I will point out the tippy hire you, 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 if I do it right. It flaps. I suppose it flaps. This guy's a weirdo. Anyway, uh, so he's supposed to flap, but I'm not kind of. There it goes. That's a lot of force. Uh, this one does not flap. It's just wings are there, but it has this little good DNA code is there. They, they started doing that in this later run. But anyway, so I will call it to a close. Thank you for tuning in. That was a weird video, but I just wanted to go over pterosaur stuff real quick and also uh, explain this one because there's this like set of 10 that have come out and uh, I want to kind of get through them before I do something else. Uh, another, another section of my series. Uh, guys, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for tuning in and all those good things.